We are very close to the 29th of May and we are still reviewing the political party manifestos. Today we're looking at Umkonto Wesizwe. Before we get into it, I'm Katlero welcoming you to Citizen Concerned, where we remind you to beware of the comrades. So the MK Party manifesto starts with an intro. Here we go. Apparently, the freedom that came in 1994 was actually a defeat. South Africa is apparently drifting away from its core values and is struggling with moral decay. After everything that the MK party leaders are involved in, the history of Jacob Zuma and Ntlamulo Ntlela, you guys want to tell us about morality, huh? <laughs> okay, I wonder what values and morality they are speaking about. Apparently, the constitution is keeping down the political influence of the majority. This is a very important issue, guys. Just because the majority wants to have a particular political influence does not make them right. Majority is not the measure of morality. We have a constitution for a reason. Imagine if the majority of the population comes out and says being a vendor is a bad thing and they politically influence citizens to attack and kill fellow citizens for being vendor. And there is no one, no law, no constitution to say they were guilty. Imagine that. Being the majority does not make you right. I mean, the majority of South Africans have been voting for rubbish parties for a long time now. They are wrong. They are the majority, yes, but they have been voting wrong. That is the danger of the majority. The majority of Germans in Nazi Germany chose to support the harassment, victimization and murder of the Jews. Guess what? They were wrong. The majority of people supported Stalin and Lenin in communist Russia and guess what? They were wrong. They paid with the deaths of their friends and families. That is the story of humans. They are usually wrong as a majority. Remember that enter through the narrow gate for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction and many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow is the road that leads to life and only a few find it. That teaches us not to go with the flow of the majority. The MK party says that the prolonged shame of South Africa since 1652 is a result of inadequate scientific, industrial, financial and military capability. <laughs> Here we go. White people, colonialism, racism. <laughs> They also claim that the reason why there is poverty, unemployment and inequality stems from the theft of land and mineral resources. Well, with respect to land, you will recall that after 1994, the ANC promised that it would use taxes collected by the government to buy land and give it to black people for the sake of making land accessible to black people. They did not even meet their own target. If they had done it, they would have owned all the land in South Africa by now. This fact of history is more recent than, uh, than the facts of history that many people choose to hold on. And I just wonder why. I just wonder why. Remember that Zuma was also the president of the ANC and of the nation, and he didn't do anything to fix this problem when he was in charge. There is also the Land Restitution Court, which allows for those whose land has been stolen or was stolen from them to be given back. The ANC government has been slow in getting that completed and where action has been taken, it has been done in a very shoddy way. Lack of resources, huh? Again, Zuma was in government and he did nothing about that. Jeez. And now you're saying that there is a problem. When you were the president, you didn't see that this was a problem. The MK party says post-apartheid reconstruction efforts cannot happen and that is because of neoliberalism. Hmm, here we go again. Neoliberalism is when there is a free market that is not controlled by the government. You know, like how uh, the government controlled communist Russia, communist China and communist Cuba. Tell me what reconstruction are they even talking about here? Construction happened all the time that white people ran this country under the same neoliberal policies, Moss. They started all these companies like Eskom and Transnet to feed the neoliberal economy. You were 
supposed to build on top of that after taking over under the ANC, but you failed to build up. Instead, you started destroying. So there was no reconstruction to do. There was further construction to do, but you chose destruction. How much money did the Guptas run away with? How do you expect to build when you allow people like the Guptas to appoint puppet ministers on your behalf? You were appointing incompetent people like Dudumieni to run South African Airways leading to its destruction. This was all you, Mr. Zuma. Neoliberal policies are the ones that allowed for the people to find alternatives. Instead of relying on SAA, they chose British Airways, Qatar Airways and many other options. You see, that is the benefit of the free markets. You destroyed our railways and our airlines and now you want to blame free markets. Guys, do not fall for any of this. The Guptas and Zumas are related to most of the poor performance we see in our state-owned entities. They go on to try to blame neoliberalism again for the unemployment when it was their communism policies, poor maintenance, corruption, and their lack of knowledge that resulted in Zuma destroying this country. The sins of Zuma were found out, but when he was found out, the effects of these sins had not even started showing. So by the time Cyril Ramaphosa, the couch president, showed up, he started to be a president of a, a ticking time bomb. Zuma was corrupt. His corruption led to the destruction of South Africa. Cyril Ramaphosa is also corrupt. He's failing to remove corrupt people and to appoint competent people. By now, a skills audit should have happened in all state-owned entities, but we don't see that happening. They now declare that they will fight neo-apartheid. Do you see this? They are calling our current country an apartheid country. Basically, white people still have control over your future through sheer hate for you. I know there are some people who love to hear that. You love to hear that you're nothing but a poor victim. The MK party wants to center South Africa on African cultural and moral values, allowing for various spiritual beliefs and so forth. So who stopped you from doing that now? You're allowed to marry 10 wives. I know you like that one, Mr. Zuma. You're allowed to believe in whatever you want to believe in and practice whatever you want to. The same constitution that you want to remove gives you and everyone in South Africa that right. So what is it really that you're trying to achieve here? I don't get it. In fact, how many children do you as Mr. Zuma have outside of wedlock? Don't lecture us about traditional values and morals when you're a leader in making children out of wedlock. The MK party wants parliamentary supremacy instead of constitutional supremacy. Again, the danger of not relying on the constitution is that as long as people are a majority, they can choose to do anything, even if it is evil, even if it is inhumane, against human rights, anything. With a constitution, what decides is the law. And we all know how Jacob Zuma hates following the law. Those who stood up against the colonialists are normally murdered, assassinated, and we can see in South Africa, they are criminalized, as uh, with the example of President Zuma. Zuma would have been home and cozy if he had been born in the times of Shaka Zulu or some ancient time like that, because that would have been the best time to be born for lawbreakers who wanted power. If you wanted power, you would have, you would have had to kill your predecessor or your challenger or be killed. And if you won, then whatever you say would have become the law. Well, sorry for you. This is the 21st century, Mr. Zoom and MK Party. And in the 21st century, we use tools of civilization to avoid people like yourself. We use codified laws. In the case of South Africa, we use constitutional law. But if you take the two-thirds in Parliament, I guess you'll do exactly what the Constitution is trying to stop you from doing. The MK party also wants to take all the land and then place it under the control of ancient cultures.
That's right. It's going to be under the control of chiefs and kings. If the king doesn't like you, you'll likely get the land that is unsuitable for anything. And if the king sleeps with you, then you get the richest lands. The chiefs and kings become deciders of what happens to lands. Basically, the MK party wants to bring us a communism in the times of Shaka Zulu. Essentially, white people are naturally excluded from land ownership since they don't have traditional leaders. What traditional leaders do white people or white South Africans of English ancestry have? As for my Afrikaners, you have to start appointing chiefs among yourselves and maybe you'll get a piece of land. Who knows? The MK party wants to act as though Zulus, Vendas, Trosas just appeared from nowhere and suddenly occupied the land we call South Africa. Everyone comes from somewhere. Even Zulus and myself, we all come from the north. So if we go back, the land was inhabited by the Khoisan. And if we go back far enough, there was once a time when this land was uninhabited. At the end of the day, the land belongs to God. Let's share it and move on. You know, President Zuma was kicked out of power precisely when he turned to the left. He was talking about land expropriation without compensation in parliament. He called for black parties to unite to use our majority to get the land back. You've noticed that the corrupt voices use social injustice as an excuse. President Zuma was president for more than eight years before he started talking about land expropriation without pay. And he only started to talk about that when he had his back against the wall on state capture. Even the fees must fall thing. When I spoke to Parliament on the ANC about fees, when we were at first running around on fees must fall, President Zuma's voice was not with us. It was when his face was against the wall that he started talking about these things. I'm not saying these things are trivial. I'm saying let's all as South Africans address them. I don't believe in com expropriation without pay. Uh, I do believe that we have to address the land question, and there's no doubt about it. But I believe if the rest of us South Africans don't address these things constructively and meaningfully, wrongdoers are going to use them as tools to divide and conquer in favour of corruption. The ANC must just do its job and finish up the land restitution. They should buy up the land in peace, transfer it to those among us who need it, and let's close this chapter and move on. The MK party wants to nationalise the reserve banks and major banks. Basically, if your bank is too small like VBS, you're safe. They don't want it. They want the big fish. They also want uh, insurance companies. They want to nationalize mines and sasol and revitalize the state-owned entities. Apparently, this will spur economic growth. <laughs> Where has this happened before? Are oh, Venezuela, China, Russia, Cuba. And what followed? Was it economic growth? Was it? Don't make me laugh. The MK party also wants to give free, mandatory, high-quality education all the way to post-grad. Does anyone else find it strange that Zuma was the president of South Africa from 2009 to 2018 and only decided to announce free education on his way out? two months before he was out of office. While president, he didn't uh, want to take the decision and bear the implementation weight. But when he was leaving, he was confident enough to do it and leave the drama for other people to handle. And today, we must trust him and his actions. Okay, whatever you say. They want to make sure that every young man goes to attend military service to cultivate discipline and patriotism. This might be good. As a first policy of theirs, I actually agree with. What do you guys think of this policy and the entire MK manifesto so far? Let us know in the comment section below, please. Let's go further into this manifesto. Apparently, South Africa is dominated culturally, artistically, spiritually, and economically by a minority group with an alien culture. White people are aliens now, according to Zuma and the MK Party. They are a small group with an alien culture. Did you notice that they don't even say white in this manifesto? 
read between the lines. Apparently due to the defeat of black people in 1994, Africans and their culture remain marginalized. Apparently what we have been told was freedom for black people was in MK's opinion the defeat of black people. Under the ANC leadership, education standards went down. The youth became more and more promiscuous and they became more and more infected by STDs. The ANC failed to maintain even a single one of the institutions that the apartheid government created and ran for decades. And according to the MK party, whose fault is that? White people's fault. Even when people of all races voted for black political, uh, a black political party in 1994, somehow black people were defeated in 1994 and it's still white people's fault. Oh, I guess it makes sense to me. What's your problem? <laughs> the MK party believes that African cultural and moral values are undermined by a single share of the population who prefer Western culture, which they say is now dominant. <laughs> Are you seeing what I'm seeing here? Zuma and the MK party are not only blaming white people, but those of us who seem to adopt and like the Western culture. We are also a problem. Well, let's see what aspects of African culture Jacob Zuma is trying to preserve with his MK party. Slavery has existed on earth for thousands of years all across the world. It existed in Africa before any Westerner entered Africa, but the Western culture is the one that was the first to ban it. In fact, Africa and Arabs continued slavery long after it was banned by the Western countries. I don't know about you, but I think we all are benefiting from this Western culture. Dear Zuma and MK supporters, are you saying that slavery was good and you want to resume it from where Western culture stopped it? You say you want to give people free education, but these primary schools and universities were brought here by Western culture. The smartphone that Tutu Zilezuma uses to record her father's speeches and dances and post them on social media? That's Western civilization. Women could not be leaders in society. They could not be business women and they could not decide for themselves. Women have a choice today and that change is because of Western civilization. Of course, Western civilization has also brought certain ills, but we are living better lives because of it. Western civilization is the reason why there is more peace than ever before. It is the reason medicine is reaching more people. So what exactly is this African culture you want us to go back to? Laws that hold presidents and kings accountable are Western laws. You went to jail, Mr. Zuma, because you were guilty. That is a Western civilization. And that's the part of Western civilization you don't like, isn't it? In the days of Shaka, none of us would have had uh, the ability or the power to do anything about you and your behavior. You want that same old culture to stay here. Women must be quiet and accept when their men abuse them. Come on, let's preserve what works and get rid of what doesn't. Apparently, cultural dislocation is also to blame for cycles of poverty. What a dumb excuse. Nowadays, it doesn't matter what your culture or cultural heritage is. You simply must adopt the skills that matter, use them for your upliftment and get out of poverty, no matter what culture you belong to. MK Party also believes that high rates of teenage pregnancies and crimes are because of this westernization. What I don't understand is if westernization is the problem, why is it that this destructive behavior is happening mainly to black people? Many white people have no culture to speak of and yet they don't fall into these kinds of problems. Why is that? The MK party wants to make sure they establish indigenous languages as mandatory official languages taught in schools from grade zero all the way to grade 12. They want those languages to be used in higher education as well as in state communication and legal proceedings. Mr. Zuma, what is a generic profile in Isizulu? What is physics in Isizulu? What about a rocket? <laughs> Guys, some political parties. Hi. Eh? 
They still haven't mentioned anything about corruption. I'm trying. I'm trying with this manifesto, guys. Let's go. I'm not guaranteeing that I'm going to finish this manifesto. You have been warned. Let's continue. The MK party say they want to remove all remnants of colonialism and apartheid from cultural and political life. So what? Are you going to get rid of all the railways and roads as well as the airplanes? Are you going to get rid of electricity, plumbing and schools? They are all parts of Western culture that came through colonialism. No more trousers, back to wearing leather patches, and hey, guess what? South Africans didn't write in our history, so it's back to oral tradition, back to hunting and gathering. The MK Party wants to implement a national education program focusing on African spiritual moral values. According to them, we need more sangomas and related trades to educate our people. Again, they mention that poverty is because of land and minerals. While Chinese, Japanese and Westerners compete in AI, robotics and many other technological issues, the Zuma team is telling you that you need to go and dig for gold and coal underground and you need to farm. That is how you will come out of poverty, according to the MK party. In a country that is well industrialized, you will find that a very, very small population is responsible for food production and a very small percentage of the population is responsible for mining. There are many countries that do not rely on farming or mining. They simply have diverse economic activities that they use to make money and get their people out of poverty. But hey, Zuma the criminal and the MK party know best, right? Look at all African countries who do not have white people owning any part of their land. Are they prosperous? I get at the source of prosperity according to Zuma and the MK party's land. Well, tell us why the majority of Africa is poor. With minerals and with land, they are still suffering. Why? Because land does not equal poverty alleviation. If land equals riches, white people should have found us rich by the time they came here, right? Yet they found us walking barefooted, walking everywhere in South Africa. We didn't have horses. We were not writing. Majority of, of our history was orally communicated. So we had all the land, but we relied on, bu on butter trade, on raiding other villages, on hunting and gathering, and all our children had to start working early uh, without getting any formal education. How long did it take us to build a house similar to a shack? Now it won't even take you a day to assemble a shack. Poverty is not eradicated by land. It is eradicated by skills being used to produce goods and services. Goods and services can be created in a house or a factory or an office, on a computer or in a car. All you need is your mind, a phone or a computer or a pen and paper, and in some cases land. But land is not the be all and end all. And the issue of land post-1994 is the ANC's fault. If the ANC had done its job, we would not be talking about this land issue anymore. Land restitution and land acquisition could have been utilized to fix the problem. But guess what? Cyril Ramaphosa, just like Jacob Zuma the criminal, just like Tabombeki, all failed to resolve the land issue. But because they are black, we do not want to acknowledge their failings in giving us the land. The MK party says agriculture is a sector with potential for employment and economic activity. So now they want us to be farm laborers and farmers. Basically back to subsistence farming similar to 500 years ago or the life of people in rural areas. While Japanese and Chinese are creating cars, apps, laptops and phones, MK wants South Africans to focus on farming to be economically competitive. While Americans are creating satellites, robots and rockets, MK wants South Africa to focus on farming to be economically competitive. What a backward way of thinking. Let me tell you something, MK Party. A vibrant economy does not rely on everyone farming. In a country that is dedicated to growing to be like Japan or Singapore, you have to actually leave the farming to a few people and the rest of the population is supposed to focus on creating serious life-changing products. 
500 years ago, Africans had to spend the majority of their lives looking for food. That is what they did from sun up to sundown. Western civilization and capitalism allow for a few of us to focus on food production while the rest of us build cars and computers and while others manufacture clothes, others go into transport and others program softwares, others focus on security and policing and many other things. Most of the wealth being created today is being created even where people do not own land. But ANC should still sort out the land issue because this story will never end. There will always be a Zuma or a Malema coming out of the woodworks to make it seem like land simply produces riches. Human ingenuity is what produces wealth. Apparently, according to Zuma the criminal and the MK party, Japan, South Korea and Vietnam achieved development based on equitable farming. Guys, the MK party is led by morons. I'm sorry, but I have to say it. Japan developed because of capitalism. They adopted technological changes. They learned new skills and embraced the skills to the point whereby their skills surpass other regions with similar skills. They made sure they produce electronics, not a little bit. They produce a lot of electronics. Sony and Yamaha to name a few. Vehicles like Toyota, Honda and Yamaha to name a few. These are highly skilled people that are not trying to get as much land as possible. I've already covered China in some of my previous videos. South Korea, the home of Hyundai and Kia, the home of Samsung. Again, skills and highly motivated and educated population led to a technological boom. If agriculture is so important in Japan, why is it that it only employs 3% of the population? If agriculture is so important in South Korea, how come only 5% of the population are in agriculture? China's population used to depend on agriculture to survive and China is still considered to be a developing country. 70% of the population used to depend on farming, but as capitalism is growing the country, the population of people that rely on farming for their livelihoods has fallen to 35%. The majority of those are subsistence farmers. China gets less than 10% of its GDP from farming. I like that MK mentions that there is a significant under-invoicing in minerals like gold, platinum and diamonds. <laughs> Whose fault is that? Zuma is in the ANC. Don't say he left, guys. You heard him say that he's still a member of the ANC. Why did he not do something when he was the president of the ANC? He spent his days chilling with the Guptas instead of fixing that part of the country and now he's out of the chair and wants to complain. You, Mr. Zuma, were responsible for the selling of our minerals and state entities. In fact, the Guptas were also stealing our minerals through their company that was involved with the Alexco mine. And the poor Richesfeld community that lost out because of your friends, the Guptas. Guys, to be honest, reading this thing is so draining. The number of lies and poor understanding of the world we live in today is unbelievable. The MK party lacks the knowledge of the policies anyone should even consider voting for. They are backward and racist, obviously. Above everything else, you should just expect to become workers and farms and mines for the Guptas and the Zoomers and maybe some Russian billionaires. Vote for these loonies at your own peril. I'll not waste any more of my time reading this trash. And if we are being honest here, guys, why should I even bother doing a review of the manifesto of a party that did not even qualify to be on the ballot? Then a few weeks ago, allegations emerged that the party may have forged some of the thousands of signatures needed to contest this month's elections. Allegations now being investigated by the police. To qualify, you have to submit a list of signatures to the IEC, right? New political parties are required to prove their support to get onto the ballot. To do that, they need the names, ID numbers and signatures of thousands of supporters. And MK stands accused of forging at least some of these lists. 
why should I even bother doing a review of the manifesto of a party that did not even qualify to be on the ballot? And a group of Cape Tonians discovered this week that they've been duped into endorsing MK, a party they do not support. That's my signature, that's my handwriting. <laughs> And what's happening there on top? That's the party name. I see, party yes, name. but <laughs> the top looks very sketchy now. While one of MK Party's very own employees did exactly what the MK Party leaders are known for, corrupt activities. Flamboyant political operator Lennox Nsodo has set off a political landmine. He'd already reported himself to the police, claiming this wrongdoing was allegedly instigated by MK leaders. His name is Lennox Nsodo. Instead of going to talk to people and honestly convincing them of putting uh, their names or their their signatures in support of the party, the MK party stole some of the signatures from databases of people looking for work. They even lied to people telling them that it was for money to be given to Khoisan people and this, that and the other. You know what? <laughs> Take a look at this. I'm talking about them asking us to go to the database of the city of Cape Town to download job seekers forms and also rewrite the names and forge signatures of those people in the IC forms. And then this corrupt guy from the MK party has the audacity to say that his party is the victim. But those are legitimate MK forms. Aren't yeah, they? they look like, I would say that they're from the looks of it, yes. We are the victim. Yeah. The person that ought to be disqualified, and this is what we need to investigate, is this saboteur. But Lennox this is not contesting the election. Even if you're the victim, it doesn't matter. The signatures are not legit, therefore automatically your party should get disqualified from the ballot. We showed the list to Chantal Adams. While recognizing her details and signature, she initially had no recollection of endorsing MK. And then it all came back to her. This guy told us the Khoisan has got money and we are entitled to that money. That is what he told us. For the Khoisan? Yes. We're supposed to give, don't know how much for a Khoisan ID, we must get a new ID and everything. It does not make any sense to me. If the signatures are not legit, why are we waiting for this long to remove them from the ballot? The MK signature um, issue, it's still under police uh, investigation. Why do we have to wait for the police to investigate? This is an endorsement form for the MK party. Isn't that right? I don't know. I was just given this form and say, um, and I was told to ask people to sign. Pastor Sam contacted the attorney who had given him the lists. The attorney confirmed he was asked to get signatures for MK, but refused to say by whom. I, I knew that the form said MK, but I, I was told that the MK works with the Khoisans. Are there no laws or rules that tell us what to do if the party has done something like this? The MK party should not be on the ballot, period. The person who was working for the MK party confessed by himself to committing these crimes. He's accused of illegally selling plots of land in Mfuleni for 100,000 rand each. And Lennox also has political aspirations. He's currently high up on MK's Western Cape Provincial Parliamentary List. That is the kind of people running the MK party. People with no moral fiber. Dirty, dirty kinds of people are in this party and their manifesto is trash. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'm Katla O. This is Citizen Concerned. And until next time, beware of the comrades.